In today's video, we're checking out the super affordable Andy Cine T6 Field Monitor. Let's get into it. Welcome to the channel, folks. My name's Shane. In today's video, we're checking out the Andy Cine T6 6-inch Field Monitor. This on-camera monitor is priced at $120 US dollars at the time of making this video, and this is one of the most affordable options currently on the market. Now, does this low price come at the expense of any compromises? Yes, but for the price, it's still worth it considering the feature set, and we'll talk more about that coming right up. Let's cover what you need to know about this display, and if you do find this video helpful, please leave a thumbs up, subscribe, and click the bell for future videos. The Andy Cine T6 is a 6-inch 1080p HD display that's capable of handling a 4K 60p maximum signal input and pass-through. While the internal output display is 1080p, you can send a signal into this and then out into a separate encoder or monitor and get a 4K 60p signal at the end. While it says 4K on the front, the actual display is 1080p. This monitor is fully compatible with different aspect ratios and resolutions, including 16x9, DCI 4K and open gate, but the preview will be down sampled to 1080p. I tested this with my S5 Mark II X, S9 and G9 Mark II. All of the cameras had their HDMI output set to auto and I had no issues previewing any of the resolutions or recording modes. One thing to note with the T6 monitor is that it's not a touch screen display. If you're coming from a screen that has touch functionality, this does take some time to get used to. While this won't be a deal breaker for everybody, getting into some of the menu settings, the process itself takes longer than it would on a touchscreen display. This will no doubt be the biggest deal breaker for some folks. That said, if it's your only display, you'll get a feel for it, and overall the menu itself is laid out in a way that's very easy to remember and cycle through. I did find myself tapping on the screen a few times out of habit, so keep that in mind. Let me show you the menu and also some of the tools built into this. So we've got our menu button on the top. This menu button, much like a lot of the cameras, is also the set button or selection button. So as you can see now, we've got a menu that's on screen. There's some up and down arrows. If I hit the down arrow, it's going to let us cycle through each of the options. And again, if we go up, it will let us go up. Now from this first option here, if I hit the menu set button again, it's going to take us into this option. Then if we hit the down arrow, we can select all of the different tools in this particular menu. And same with the up button. To turn something on, we need to get into that again by hitting the menu button. And then we can turn that on again by hitting the menu button. And now we have all of our readouts on screen here. Now this is kind of like the default one. I'll just show you how this looks. The exit button allows you to sort of get out of everything. And if you just wait a few seconds, it will automatically disappear and you'll be left with the current view. The great thing about this unit is there's three function buttons at the top. So F1, F2, and F3. If I hit F1, it's going to turn that particular feature off. If I turn it on again, there's our quick access to that particular option. F2 is our center marker. You can see a center marker in the middle of the screen. If I hit it again, it's going to disappear. Now the camera itself has a center marker already on, but you can see when I do hit it that we get a red one on screen, which is pretty cool. F3 on top of the unit is assigned to a aspect ratio marker. So as I turn this on, you can see that we've got a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. Now that I'm shooting in 16 by 9, it probably doesn't make much sense. But if we go into here and change this to open gate, say 6K open gate, you can see that now we can frame up our image. Now let's turn the focus assist on. So by getting into the menu here, we hit menu again. We can use the down arrow to go into focus assist. Oh, one too many. Let's go back up. Hit the menu button again. And we can turn this on by hitting the menu button. Now, we can also change the color of the focus assist, but green actually looks really good. It sort of is a contrast to the scene behind me right now. If I was to use blue, because I've got a blue light in the scene, it might be a little tricky to see. So what we can do now is also go down to the peaking level, which we can change. So we can hit menu and then uh, click up or down to change the intensity of the focus peaking. This is great. I actually really like this to be fairly saturated. Anywhere from five to seven looks pretty good to my eye. Now you can see in the assist menu, how many different tools we have at our disposal, which is awesome. So you can turn on and off all of these. And I'm just gonna show you the next one down. So we'll hit the down button here. It will take us into the marker so we can set up grid lines and all that kind of stuff if we want to have a different framing indicator on screen, which is nice. And let's turn one of these on. So we'll just go into this first one here. 
and we'll turn this on and now we have our grid lines on so this allows us to get the rule of thirds we can frame it up nice and simply right here as you can see from the red lines on screen now you might find the red a little too intrusive you can of course customize this as well with the menu button we scroll down over here we can change the color so let's do that this is one of the problems with this unit if it was a touch screen it'd be a lot quicker to go down to say change this to blue but it is what it is so you've just got to kind of work with the buttons on the top of the unit here but it still allows you to get all the great options and once you've got this set up the way that you like it you don't even necessarily need to go back into certain options from the image option here we have all of these different options including anamorphic so if you're shooting anamorphic this does have anamorphic support which is fantastic and you can also zoom in on your image if you want to nail critical focus so let's take a look at that we'll go in over here and we'll turn this on and boom so now as you can see we can manually focus the camera and really make sure that we've got critical focus nailed because uh, sometimes shooting manual focus can be challenging and it's great to be able to zoom in like this and get the exact point in focus. The great news is this Andy City monitor already has a few different cube files built in for real-time LUT monitoring, which is awesome. You can, of course, import your own if you choose. There's a few spare slots down the bottom here. Now, if you want to assign the shortcut keys, you can go into this user option here to shortcut key, and then you can pick from any number of tools that you want to have stored to the custom option. So F1, for example, if we want to modify this, we just hit the menu set button, and then we can pick from all of these different tools. And then when I hit F1 on top of the monitor, it will turn on and off that tool. If you want to choose something other than English, we have a whole bunch of other languages built into this, so it's nice and easy to switch languages. You can also adjust the on-screen display option. So if you want it to time off a little bit sooner, say you've got an overlay on or the menu, you can turn it to 15 seconds and it will basically turn that off a lot faster, which is pretty cool. We can also change the volume for the headphones here as well. And you can do a factory reset if you choose to. Updating the firmware is done like this. I haven't actually done it with this unit yet, but if you need to find it, it's from the bottom of the system file option. All right, let's talk about build quality. So the build quality itself is quite good. Andy Cine have listed this as an aluminium or aluminum alloy housing. It's got a smooth and kind of cold feel to the touch, and it's also very light, weighing in at only 2.12 pounds or just under one kilogram. I thought initially it was made of plastic, so I have to give it a point here in terms of the materials. The unit runs on both 5 volt DC via USB-C or a Sony MPF battery, which is not included. I had to use my Viltrox monitor battery, <laughs> but the great news is if you already have an MPF style battery, you'll be able to use it with this monitor. And if you don't, it will be an additional expense. The image on screen is nice and sharp, and if you're shooting on an overcast day, you shouldn't have any issues seeing it. I did struggle a bit though on brighter days as I had quite a lot of glare coming off the screen, but it's just bright enough to let you get away with it in most shooting scenarios. If you like to wear polarized sunglasses like I do when I'm outside, you won't be able to see anything. So all the B-roll I shot <laughs> was fabricated. There are stick-on screens that you can buy to cancel out polarized sunglasses, but don't consider this to be a deal breaker, especially at this price. At maximum brightness, this is slightly less bright than the flippy screens on my Lumix cameras. Now, they're notoriously bright at plus three brightness. So they're very easy to see in any shooting scenarios, and this is just behind it. So it's not quite as bright as the built-in camera display. If you got a camera from another brand, odds are this will be brighter. If you plan on using this indoors or in control conditions, for example, like in a studio, you're not going to have a problem with the brightness and you can set it down to 70 and it will still be very bright. The T6 has a contrast rating of 1000 to one, which is basically a standard for field monitors today. A 1001 contrast rating means the darkest blacks are 1000 times darker than the brightest whites or vice versa. While the colors and contrast are nice just with the stock settings and all look very accurate to my eyeball test, you can of course fully customize all of these parameters. If you plan on shooting outside, to make life easier, there's a clip on bracket and fold out Velcro sun hood that you can attach to the monitor. And this is where the price compromises come in. The first time I tried to take this off, the Velcro came off the bracket that clips onto the monitor, which isn't great. I did this in the studio where it wasn't hot and the glue came up straight away. This will no doubt be an issue for anyone who plans on packing this up and down quite regularly. If you don't plan on using the hood, no problem, but it's definitely worth mentioning as you'll no doubt need to find some third party Velcro or super glue it down yourself so it doesn't come off. Along the underside of the unit here, there's a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack for monitoring audio. 
and there's a USB-C port for dedicated power. The great news is you can power this unit indefinitely using USB-C without the battery installed. This is great, it saves you having to always have a battery plugged into the back. There's also two quarter 20 screw points for vertical or horizontal mounting. The DC output can be used to power other accessories and there's also a DC 12 volt input that you can use as a separate power source. Included in the box, we get a monitor shoe mount, which can easily be angled and rotated for different shooting scenarios. This mount is made specifically for cameras, but like I mentioned before, you can easily mount this screen directly onto a tripod or a light stand, thanks to the mounting points directly on each side of the unit. All right, let's wrap this up. So overall, this is a pretty impressive package for around 120 US dollars, and you'd be hard pressed to find a better unit at this price. This unit is lightweight, it's large, and has good image quality for most shooting scenarios. The USB-C power solution and MPF battery support means it's easy to get up and shooting. This is great for someone in the studio where you might just want to run it off USB-C, but if you want to take it out in the field, you can definitely run it off any sized MPF battery. This has all the video and monitoring tools you could ask for at an entry level price point. So for that, it's very impressive. My only complaints is that there's no touchscreen display for zooming. The sunshade hood and Velcro is already coming apart, so I don't love that. But you can make your mind up whether or not that's a huge problem for you or not. And this is just my review unit, probably not all units, but it's definitely worth mentioning. There's also, unfortunately, no battery or case included, which is a bit of a bummer. So these additional accessories could add up to potentially add another 20 or $40 to the entire package, depending on the quality of battery that you choose. I'll link down to some battery recommendations down below. While Andy Cine have provided a micro HDMI to HDMI cable, there's no full size to full size cable anywhere in the box. So if you have a camera that has a full size HDMI port, then you'll need to buy that as well. This is a great value unit for someone who already has a battery and a case if you plan on moving this around. I recently reviewed the Viltrox DC-X3, which I think is a better unit overall because of the touchscreen interface, but it's more than double the price. So if you want to check that review out, I'll link it up in the cards. A massive thanks to Andy Cine for sending this out. If you want to check this out, I'll leave some affiliate links down in the description box below that help support the channel at no additional cost to you. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, click the bell, and hit all notifications for future videos. And if you don't want to wait for my next video, check out this one on screen that YouTube thinks that you'll like. And a massive thanks for watching, and I will catch you soon. See ya.